Target just out with quarterly results, and joining us right now to talk about it is Target's chairman and CEO, Brian Cornell. Um, Brian, it's great to have you here today. Thank you for joining us. Looking at these results, every number was better than the street was anticipating. You raised your guidance to the higher end of, expect of what you had previously given uh, the, for the previous guidance range. You're looking at full year operating income margin rate of 8% or higher. These are incredibly strong numbers, and yet the stock's selling off. W what do you think about that? Well, I, I can't tell you what's happening this morning, but I do know, Becky, you know, the team's delivered really strong results. As I look at the second quarter, you know, we delivered growth on top of growth. And we've been doing that consistently for years now. So really strong traffic in our stores, great store comps, really solid digital performance. I mean, we're putting a eight, nine comp in the quarter on top of 24% last year. And that was historically high. Right, so like what do people I feel, expect, right? <laughs> I feel really, really good about our performance. And you said that a lot of this is coming back. Uh, comparable store sales growth, comparable, comparable sales growth, I should say, was driven entirely by traffic. What are you seeing in the stores? Well, store traffic and traffic overall grew by almost 13%. So clearly, consumers are back out. They're physically shopping in stores. They're inside a Target each and every day. And traffic was the driver behind our growth this quarter. And it has been for a while. So I think the investments we made during the pandemic in safety and really making sure we provided our guests with a safe shopping experience, we built trust and the guests continues to reward us. You know, they're in our stores, they're still using our digital channel. And I thought our second quarter was perhaps one of the best in retail. Okay. Let's let me poke at just a couple of things and you tell me a little bit about it. Digital comp store sales or digital comparable sales were up by 10 percent. People have gotten used to last year's 195 percent growth in that range. You know, the two year numbers. stack looks pretty good. Right. <laughs> so is there anything that you see that concerns you? I, I guess let me just poke at something else. Somebody said, OK, Joe was pointing out that the average transaction was down a little bit. Does that mean people are spending less or does that mean they're coming in more frequently and, yeah. and that's what's happening? I'll go back to, I mean, with traffic up 13 percent, they're just seeing us more often. And I think Americans are out, they're physically shopping in stores, so they're inside of our stores more frequently. They're shopping all of our categories. I mean, we saw growth across all five of our key merchandising categories. And, you know, that digital number up 10 percent on top of 195 last year, but the same day services drive up and pick up and ship, they were up 55%. So they're still growing and we're still seeing great traction and use of those services. You know, there are a lot of people who are wondering how things are doing in the current quarter, just because we've seen this Delta variant grow a little bit. Is that slowing the consumer at all? Becky, we're off to a really strong start in this quarter. And a lot of it is back to school shopping and back to college shopping. And we're a destination for back to school and back to college. So the quarter's off to a really strong start. So we're not seeing any slowdown in our momentum. Uh, so it's not a behavior change from the consumer Not at, at all. Point. Now, I think America, you know, we're more cautious right now with the Delta variant, but I'm seeing a very resilient consumer who's physically out shopping and trying to get back to life. And they're getting ready for back to school and back to college. We think they're going to go back to celebrating Halloween. And I know as we talk to consumers, they're excited about the holiday season. Now, they'll be cautious, but they want to get together with friends and family. So we're expecting a strong holiday season and we're continuing to see you know, really strong growth in our business. There have been people who said, if you want to buy your holiday gifts, you, you basically had to buy them yesterday because it's going to be really hard to keep the store shelves stocked this year, especially with all the problems that we've seen in China and the supply chain and other issues. Is that the case? Well, our team has done a terrific job of really maneuvering through this challenging environment. And if you look at our report, our inventory was up two and a half billion dollars. So we're getting access to that inventory. You know, our stores are at this point ready for the school season, the college season, and we'll be ready for the holidays. So you already have this stuff. You're not worried about it. We've got a it. lot of inventory flowing our way right now. In terms of how you get that inventory, is it more costly? Is it more difficult? Not, I'm sure it's more difficult, but is it costing you more? Is it going to hurt margins? And that's yeah. with the and margin guidance. Our given. size and scale, the relationships we have with our vendor partners is certainly a benefit right now. But we continue to focus on delivering great value. If you look at our back to school assortment, 80% of it is priced under $10. And lots of items are under a dollar. So we're continuing to focus on making sure in this environment, we deliver great value. The assortment is affordable. And we're making sure that we're walking hand in hand with the guests as they get ready for back to school.
A year ago, the things that were hot items were things like hand sanitizers um, and maybe backyard pools, things like that. What are the hot items right now? Well, we saw, obviously, big growth in apparel as America goes back to restaurants and out shopping um, in our stores. But we're seeing, obviously, more backpacks and lunch boxes because kids are expected to go back to a classroom. And I think they're excited to go back to school. So, you know, those key items for back to school that you would traditionally buy, well, they're back in the basket right now. So we're seeing apparel grow, kids' apparel, because you need a uniform to go back to school in many cases. So all those traditional items are clearly, you know, back in the basket.